So you've been watching my World of Warcraft videos and you've said to yourself, hmm, actually that looks pretty cool. You've downloaded the game for free, you've created an account, logged in, and now you're looking at the start screen wondering where the heck you go from here. Well, don't worry. Today's video is going to be teaching you absolutely everything that you need to know to get the best start possible on your adventures through Azeroth in World of Warcraft. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi, I've been playing World of Warcraft since I was 16, way 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 back when the game first launched, and today I want to show you how to get the very best start possible. Please, if you find this useful, take a brief second just to hit like, subscribe for more content like this, otherwise, let's jump right in. So when you first end up in World of Warcraft, you are going to be given a character creation screen. Now it's not going to look exactly like this because you probably have these races here greyed out and I'll cover those allied races in a future video each, but essentially you're going to be looking at something not entirely dissimilar from this. You've got two factions, the Alliance on the left, the Horde on the right, a whole ton of different races down either side corresponding to those, and then a load of classes along the bottom as well, and it's like, where do you go from here? What do you do with this? Well, yeah, this actually isn't as important as you might think, because one of the great things about World of Warcraft is that if you create a character and you decide you don't like it, you can just create more. Like, it's really not difficult. So, let's have a look at this screen first of all. So, the left and right, Alliance and Horde, what the heck is the difference? Well, actually this is arguably the single most important decision that you're going to make at this point. And it's basically, do you want to be this group of characters and play with people who are playing these races? The Alliance is essentially a loose conglomeration of humanoid races, mainly dedicated towards the light, and they see themselves as protectors of Azeroth. It's very easy to think of the Alliance as good guys, but you'd be horrifically wrong for doing so. There is just as much wrong with the Alliance as there is with the Horde, and that's one of the beauties of Warcraft lore. Or, on the Horde, we have, on the right here, sorry, we have the Horde. These are much more bestial races. Rather than the Alliance having sort of more of focus around the religion of the light, the Horde tends to lean more towards, like, shamanism and spirituality, the forces of nature. It's not a hard and fast rule, obviously the Alliance have Night Elves, but it's just a basic idea. If you like a more brutish, perhaps savage, although that in itself can be an unfair word to use, for these, but something a bit more tribalistic, then the Horde is the is the faction for you. Again, they're often characterized as the bad guys, but that is simply poor understanding of the law. Even the undead, a race that you would traditionally think of as being the bad guys, actually really aren't, and are pretty much a force for good in a lot of the situations throughout the game. So why does this matter? Well, simply put, because if you have friends on the Alliance or friends on the Horde, it is much easier to play with those people than it is if you're the other way around. If you've got Alliance characters and they've got Horde characters, you can play in quests together, but it's much, much simpler if you're the same faction. So let's have a look at the Alliance first of all. We have a variety of different races down here, and I would argue that races are probably the least important aspect of the character creation process. Your uh, class is going to be more important, but it's worth mentioning race because it does change which classes you can play as. Obviously we have the humans of Stormwind City, they're humans, they're exactly what you expect. The dwarves of Ironforge, short stout warriors um, who live in, up in the the mountains. We have the Night Elves, a naturalistic race of ancient elves from the beginning of Azeroth's history, basically. Um, these are often seen as the heroes of the story, but very much also the villains of the story. There's a lot of Warcraft lore that is basically everything was working fine until the Night Elves came along. We have the Gnomes. The Gnomes are short, diminutive little tinkerers. Um, Probably my least favourite race in the game, they kind of just annoy the daylights out of me, but some people absolutely love them. And then the Draenei. Draenei are, <laughs> brace yourselves if you're not familiar with Warcraft lore, these are interdimensional travellers who have been essentially running away from the greatest existential threat to the entire universe for millennia, and during the events of Burning Crusade, they flew an interstellar spaceship into Azeroth and crash landed it and then joined the Alliance. Yeah. It's a little bit crazy, but I actually really enjoy these guys. 
The Worgen. The Worgen are humans from Gilneas City that have been afflicted by the curse of the Worgen. They are basically werewolves with a strong Victorian vibe around them. Really quite cool. And then Pandaren. We'll talk more about Pandaren later because they feature on both factions. On the Horde side, we have Orcs. Orcs were originally a tribal and shaman uh, shamanistic race in a, 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 on a planet called Draenor. They came through a thing called the Dark Portal to Azeroth, where they were, for a time being at least, very much the bad guys. Demonically possessed, gave them green skin. They have since kind of gotten over that and trying to deal with the fallout from that. Um, nowadays, they are a brutal and savage race, but very much bound by honor and like to protect the world around them as well. They're not not just brutal barbarians, they are very down-to-earth cool people. The undead, basically without going too far into this, there is a big undead plague that ravages across the entire north of the human kingdoms. This guy called Arthas, who was the prince of said kingdom, ends up joining with the Lich King because yay, that seems like a good thing to do right, and creates an entire army of the undead, the Scourge, or rather heads the army of the Scourge. Eventually his Lieutenant Sylvanas Windrunner breaks free, and when she gets her consciousness back and her own sort of self-will and freedom, um, she then starts bringing other undead to her cause. These technically aren't undead, they're called the Forsaken. Um, they are an, a group of the undead that have free will and autonomy. The Tauren, one of my favourite races. These guys are essentially minotaurs, hailing from the land of Mulgore. Um, they are very big on nature and worship of the ancestors and stuff like this. A lot of cool stuff going on with those guys. Much the gentle giants for the most part throughout the lore, but of course there are um, other examples as well. The Trolls of Senjin, these were the first people to join the Orcish Warchief Thrall when he landed on the uh, on, on the landmass of Kalimdor. Um, Vol'jin Darkspear pledges himself to Thrall's um, Horde. These guys are again big on the voodoo and spirits, worshipping Daloa. Um, if you like your Jamaican accents and sort of a bit more of the dark side of voodoo and that, Trolls are very much for you. The Blood Elves, another one of my favourite races. These guys are essentially the remnants of a race of highborn elves that broke away from the Night Elves, continued to use magic. That Arthas guy we mentioned before blew up the source of their power, um, and they ended up briefly like turning towards darker energies to sate their hunger for power, um, then joined the Horde ultimately, and everything worked out A-OK. -okay. These guys stand out amongst the Horde as being very much the sort of hoity-toity group around. Not to say they don't like getting their hands dirty, and heck, their law for the Blood Elf Paladins is just badass, and I will challenge anyone who says otherwise. Then we have the Goblins. Goblins are again one of my least favourite races. Um, they can be interesting and quite hilarious in a lot of the situations. A lot of the storylines involving Goblins can be really quite funny, but they are very much a ridiculously capitalistic society. If you've ever sat there and gone, I think it's really unfair how my boss treats me, wait until you hear how Goblins treat each other. Everything is explosives and getting one up on each other. Um, bit of a cutthroat society of full of explosions. And then again, we have the Pandaren. Now, the Pandaren are an ancient race of peoples native to the land of Pandaria, um, where they have essentially performed an ascetic lifestyle to suppress emotion because Pandaria has a like big evil Shah thing that feeds off emotions and creates all kinds of problems. These guys were added in Mr. Pandaria to both factions to give you options as to what you, you know, whichever way you wanted to go. Finally, for both sides, there are also the Drag Thir. These are exclusive to uh, the Dragon uh, Dragonflight expansion. They are basically dragon folk and they have only one class. We're not going to be talking about them in this video. So, how do you decide? Well, there are two ways. On one hand, if you don't have friends or anything, you're creating a character purely for yourself, go for what looks cool. But also check which races can be which classes. If a class in particular sticks out to you, you are going to need to account for that. So for example, you can't be a human druid or shaman. Sorry, it just doesn't work like that. So kind of pick either what comes out to you in the lore. If you've played any of the Warcraft games, if you're at all familiar with the lore of these games, you can kind of just pick what you like, um, you know, what you know that you like, but you can also look into things like 
just visuals, because I'll be completely honest, one of the things I have discovered is that I didn't enjoy playing a mage at all until I created an undead mage. Like, I tried mages of different races and never got on with it, but the actual animations and that of the undead mages just really worked for me, and I like it. It made it a much more enjoyable class to play. So playing what you like the look of is absolutely vital. Yes, the races do have their own unique little abilities. A funny little thing as an example for this is that because of the critical damage buff that Tauren get, they actually make ridiculously good mages, but to me a Tauren mage just looks wrong. And the thing is, None of those really matter. If you are picking a race, if you want to min-max, there's so little in it. We're talking like fractions of a percent, really, between the difference between, say, a human mage, a gnome mage, or whatever, about the kind of damage output they can do. You really don't need to worry about these things. Pick what you think looks cool or what sounds cool. Obviously, though, we need to talk about the classes as well, and we'll start by having a look at humans. We'll go from left to right here, just in the order that are displayed, and we'll jump through the other races to showcase when we need to. So, warriors. Warriors are either tanks or DPS, damage dealers, and they are heavily armoured, plate-wearing masters of warfare. If you like hitting something over the head with two axes or a big two-handed sword, or if you want to protect your allies with a sword and shield, warrior is the way to go. Hunters are your sort of trackers and trappers, your D&D ranger, I guess. You get animal companions with you for the most part. All three of your talent choices are going to be damage dealers, whether you want to be a bow slinging with marksman, whether you want to focus on your pets with beast mastery, or whether you like to actually swap your bow out for a pole arm and get up in someone's grill as a survival hunter is up to you, but you are going to be a damage dealer using traps, mainly ranged weapons, and animal companions. Mages are pretty self-explanatory. Whether you are a fire mage, a frost mage, or an arcane mage, you are a damage dealer. They're just different flavors of playing the same class that do damage in different ways. Like frost has a lot of slow abilities, fire is all about chaining together big crits, and arcane is about switching between two phases. A phase where you build up your mana reserves and a phase where you spend all of them. And it's kind of up to you which way you go, but if you like casting big flashy spells, the mage is probably the way to go. Rogues are your thieves or your assassins. These guys are close combat damage specialists. You are going to be stabbing people in the back, lacing your weapons with poison, occasionally pulling a little pistol out of your pocket for a cheap shot at someone, occasionally even rolling dice to get yourself bonuses. If you like playing the scoundrel or the rogue or the thief, then the rogue is definitely the class for you. And the fact that you can actually do this whole stealth mechanic as well can be really cool in the leveling process because it allows you to sneak through groups of enemies just to get to what you need means you can level a little bit faster than some of the other classes if you're really careful with the use of that. Priests. Priests are a class I was never particularly interested in until I rolled one. Again, these are primarily healers with either holy or discipline, whether you like to heal people with holy or protect people using shields and like spells that will then regenerate health through those shields. That's discipline, but there is also the Shadow Priest spec. And Shadow Priests are damage dealers that basically work with insanity and vampiric abilities. Lots of really cool stuff going on there. Again, these I used to really dislike, but some recent changes to the class have made them actually really surprisingly fun for me to play. I've been leveling a troll priest recently um, with my wife and having a lot of fun doing so. Primarily healing, but the shadow uh, DPS spec is a lot of fun too. Warlocks. Warlocks are kind of like mages that turned to the dark side. They have made pacts with dark powers from beyond our realm, namely demons. So you get to summon demons to your cause. Your spells are all about inflicting pain and misery. So you have green fireballs, you have curses, you have corrupting spells that deal damage over time. If you fancy summoning an entire army of demons, Demonology Warlock might be for you. If you want to hit things in the face with burning demonic fire, then destruction might for you might be for you. And if you like cursing things until it's too weak to do anything and it just collapses from exhaustion and dies, then affliction might be for you. Paladins are holy warriors of the light. 
except for blood elf paladins that kind of don't so I'm used to more like bend the light to their whim rather than channel it but hey that's more lore for a different day paladins are holy warriors of the light crusaders again these guys have all three possibilities they can be tanks using a one-handed weapon and a shield to protect their allies they can be d uh, damage dealers the retribution paladins using big two-handed weapons to carve apart their opponents with righteous fury or holy paladins standing at the back healing up their friends and allies to keep the fight going as long as possible keep people alive as long as possible paladins have a lot of really cool story a lot of really cool armor sets i've been really enjoying playing these guys recently they're plate wearers um, and they the fact that they have all three specializations can be a lot of fun as well to let you play around with that now we're going to jump down to Night Elf to have a look at Druids. Now Druids are masters of nature. They have multiple different shapeshift forms, and it's worth noting that the shapeshift forms do actually differ depending on the different races that you choose. So you've just seen the Night Elf cat form, that's the Worgen cat form there. If I were to go across to Trolls, then you get the Troll cat form in a second. It's just going to take a moment to cast. There we go. And then the Tauren of the cat forms as well, which actually maintains its horns. Now, druids are a bit of an unusual class. They have four talent specializations. They can be a tank turning into bear form to protect their allies. They can be an up close and personal cut you apart with claws and teeth in cat form, which is kind of similar to playing rogue if you want to go feral druid. They have a healing specialization to keep their allies alive and to regrow everything around them. And they have a casting spec, which basically turns you into a gigantic feathery chicken um, that casts both sun and moon magic in a really cool rotation. Druids are kind of the, the, the class that does everything. They have melee DPS, ranged DPS, healer, and tank, and they are the only class in the game that does that. They also get access to some really unique areas that other classes don't get access to, like the Moonglade, and this can actually help a lot with travel. The other one that's big for travel is mages, who can open portals and teleport each other around, um, which is really quite cool as well. We then have shamans, and for this I'm going to jump across the Tauren because I kind of have to. Shamans are masters of the primal elements. Air, fire, water, and earth. These guys, again, are primarily damage dealers, although they do have a healing spec as well with a restoration shaman, and they can do that in one of two ways if they want to deal damage. You have the in elemental shamans that cast spells of lightning, wind, and fire, like lava bursts and things like this that they can do from range, chain lightning spells, summoning elementals to fight alongside them. That's the lava burst spell there. Or they can go Enhancement, where they wield two weapons, one weapon in each hand, and basically become like a battle mage, where they start hitting things up close and just bursting off these instant cast spells in the middle of combat as well, as they build up stacks of a Wind Fury weapon. I've been having a lot of fun with Shaman recently, actually. Interesting class to play, very different from some of the others, I feel. Then we have Monk. Monk again comes in all three flavors. You can be a tank monk, a damage monk, or a healing monk, and you kind of get the benefits of all of those. You are usually fairly up close, punching people in the face, quick movements, dodging rolls, and all this kind of thing. Very fast moving race um, to get yourself around the uh, like the combat arenas and fights and that very very quickly. Then we have Demon Hunters. These guys are a hero race, which means you don't actually start at level 1, you start at level 8, and you unlock a lot of your abilities through your starting storyline. These are exclusive to Blood Elves or Night Elves. They are essentially elves that have sold their soul to the Legion in exchange for demonic power in order to beat the Legion. So not directly sold it to the Legion, sold it to demons. They use demons, they kill demons, to devour demons, and turn themselves into these monsters in in order to do whatever they want to do, usually get revenge for like losing their families and stuff like that. Now these guys can be tanks or they can be damage dealers. Again, they are primarily a melee spec. They've got a lot of fun movement tricks like the ability to glide, dashes, leaps, all this kind of crazy stuff. Like playing Demon Hunter sometimes gives me a headache with how just full of motion they are. Good fun though. 
Then we have Death Knights. Death Knights were added in Wrath of the Lich King. Again, a hero race. They don't start at level one, um, and you go through their unique starting area to learn your abilities. Originally enslaved to the Lich King Arthas, which we'd mentioned earlier, the Death Knights have broken free and then join either the Horde or the Alliance based on their previous race. These guys are masters of death and three talent specializations, one of which is a tanking specialization, two of which are damage dealing, you've got blood, you've got frost, and you've got unholy. Blood is all about self-healing and sustain. Unholy is about your little ghoul minions and things that you can summon around you. And of course, frost, well, does what it says on the tin. It's all about big attacks and like dealing frost damage to people, slowing them down, holding enemies in place. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with frosts. If you fancy being an undead edgelord, then the Death Knight is very much the class for you. Of course, Demon Hunter does also appeal to the uh, the resident edgelords as well. Um, it's an interesting class. I actually really like it, all jokes aside. Again, we won't talk about Evoker for the purposes of this video. Now, when you create a character, it's worth noting that, for example, you choose, you like the look of the Tauren, and you want to be a Paladin. So when you go to then customize, you get to choose all the different stuff, like their different faces, whether you want different skin colors, all kinds of crazy stuff going on there, horns, jewelry, hair, this kind of thing, depending on whichever race you've chosen. And some races do have more customization options than others. It's also worth noting there are barbershops in the game, so if you do change your mind later about how your appearance looks, don't stress about it. You'll need to pick a name for your character, of course. Names, not overly important, but obviously pick something that is safe and not going to get you banned. And if you are playing on an RP server, role-playing server, your name really should be something that makes sense. So calling a Tauren bully beef or something doesn't really work on an RP server. I mean, you can do it, absolutely you can do it, and people do, but it kind of gets frowned down on a little. Um, but it's entirely up to you where you go with that. And the wonderful thing about creating characters is you can just keep creating them. Like, my main character here is my demonology warlock, my blood elf warlock, Celes. This is who I play in my raid guild, who I go raiding with. I do also play Mahaya Hay a lot, my survival hunter, um, who, again, is a melee spec hunter. I have a lot of fun with him. Those are my two max levels. But I've got a lot of other characters that I'm really enjoying as well. Illyrial, my blood elf paladin. Corvallian, my blood elf hunter, because I have three three hunters. There's my demon hunter as well. I've got just loads here, like even just ones that I've created as placeholders that I will level up eventually. I'm currently leveling up Ebuwara, a high mountain tauren shaman as enhancement, whilst I'm also leveling up a, uh, a, a dark iron dwarf as a elemental shaman as well, just to play around with these. I've got a Kul Tiran rogue alongside my uh, Volpera rogue. Just, you can cre keep creating characters, and if you like the look of something and you then don't enjoy the class, you can try another class of that same race. You can delete a character if you want to keep the name going across, like if I decided that I didn't enjoy Hunter, something was wrong with me. I could delete Brugni and end up creating, like, say, a Dwarven Warrior and calling him Brugni, as long as, you know, the name has to be unique is the point I'm getting at here. And so you can kind of just play around with things, try different race and combos, race and class combos, and that will give you an idea of what you enjoy. Now, the first time that you jump in on a new character, it will give you the uh, the starting experience of Exile's Reach, which is a great little tutorial area. But it's worth noting that when you create a second character onwards, you will get the choice of going through Exile's Reach again on that character, or you can go and kind of just through the original starting area of whatever that race was. So for example, let me just go here. I'm going to create a Blood Elf. I'm not even going to bother changing anything about this at all. And because I am a non, completely non-creative person, I am going to just try and figure out how we do the accents. There we go. There we are. That's a Blood Elf Mage called Celis. Oh no, I can't do that. So we're just gonna add another S to it. Wow, someone's taken that as well. It's had four S's. Goodness gracious me. Uh, let's try that. Just anything. No, no, no. Whatever. My goodness. Okay, this is a really bad example. Um, let's just pick any old name. I'm just going to randomly 
throw together some strings there because I'm going to delete this guy almost instantly anyway. Here we go. Exile's Reach or Sunstrider Isle. Sunstrider Isle is the original Burning Crusade area for Blood Elves. It contains their backstory and the areas um, are relative to them. So it's a bit more personal, whereas Exile's Reach is much more about the Alliance and the Horde and the start of the Dragonflight expansion in a certain way. It's a little bit going on there. Some cool story. It's a bit of a better starting experience. It's definitely a lot faster. But once you've done Exile's Reach once, you may want to do Sunstrider Isle or wherever just to get a feel for who your race are and some of their background. It's worth noting that the Draenei and the Blood Elf starting areas are two of the slightly more advanced ones. Like when you get down to the second part of the Blood Elf starting area, Tranquillion, that can be a little bit rough um, with how questing around there works. And it can take a lot longer to reach sort of level 20 compared to just doing, uh, to reach like level 10 or whatever than just doing Exile's Reach. Um, but hey, kind of just an interesting breakdown there. Now, I have covered in my other videos where you go from starting there, that you go and have a look at things like Chromie Time. The game does give you a really good tutorial. Follow that tutorial. Follow everything. Read everything. Try and get the best understanding that you can. And of course, after this, if you enjoy this video, I will be putting out brief little starter guides for all of the different classes. So let me know in the comment section down below which class you want to see covered first. Otherwise, folks, this video is already going on a little bit in length. If you have enjoyed it again, please hit like on it, subscribe if you haven't already. And I do have a Patreon page where you can pledge to support if you want to help keep content like this coming. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you all in Azeroth.